I love to see the towns passing by and arrive these rails neath God's blue sky. Let me travel this land from the mountains to the sea, cause that's the life I believe. And when I'm gone and at my grave you stand, say God called home your rambling man. Welcome to Ramblin' Man Podcast, episode number 31. This one is with a returning guest, Erin Hall. You'll remember her from episode 21, talking about CrossFit. This episode is a mixture of her recounting her time in Qatar doing CrossFit, and also her coming out story. It was good to have Erin back on the podcast. She's always a fascinating talk. It's good to have her back here in Knoxville. If you'd like to follow along with Erin's adventures, you can follow her on Instagram. Search Erin Hall or go to at Erin period Noreen E-R-I-N period N-O-R-E-N-E Aaron Noreen or just search for Aaron Hall and you should be able to find her. We're putting this out now to kind of help her spread the word a little bit about an event she's helped managing. It's called Outwad and it's here in Knoxville. Outwad is a international initiative to bring LGBTQ plus athletes and allies as they put to sweat for a cause in a safe, inclusive CrossFit training environment. She's running the one here in Knoxville. It's on February 9th at CrossFit K-Town. If you'd like more information about it, go to imout.org slash events slash Outwad dash Knoxville. The Outwad part is O U T W O D. So again, that's I am out.org slash events slash Outwood Knoxville. Or if you go on to Facebook and just search Outwad Knoxville, you'll find the event. Looks to be very interesting and happy she's doing it. We have a returning sponsor this episode. It's Feral Giant. Feral Giant is a graphic design, illustration, and social media consultation company. They do branding work, they do design, they do illustration, they help people do their social media. Started working more in web design and SEO improvement. They're doing really good things here in Knoxville and starting to branch out a little bit more into the surrounding areas. If you'd like more information about Feral Giant, go to feralgiant.com. Without much further ado, here's Aaron. Well, I'm all about the stupid. I'm all about the stupid questions. Perfect. All right, since everything's on the table, how do you think Pruitt's doing so far? I'm just kidding. No, actually, I do have an so opinion is about your that. Dad a football ex UT football player. No, he would no. love that, though. Okay. Actually, well, you posted the story from the sideline, and it was a day Club. where they had a bunch of VFLs there. I was like, oh, crap. Did right. I not know your dad was an ex? That would be a cool story. No, we were down in the Letterman's Club. Uh, dad said that his backstory was going to be, if anyone asked, that he was a basketball player. So that was my dad's sport with the, the height and stuff. Oh, okay. However, before we get too far down that rumor, no, neither of my parents went to UT, nor were they collegiate athletes. My girlfriend is oh, okay. a UT women's tennis coach. She oh. was an athlete, so she's able to get us into the Letterman's okay. Club. So f- from where we stand, mm-hmm. your dad will like me. Mm-hmm. And your mom is still mad at me for Correct. calling her Renee. No, Renee. No, Renee. Right. <laughs> Noreen. Yes. Well, if it helps any, the restaurant over here, I don't know if it's Chivo or Chavo, because I jokingly mm. corrected somebody, and mm. now I can't remember which one's the correct way. Hmm. I think I've always said Chivo, but now I like Chivo. Yeah. I don't huh. know. Potato, potato. <laughs> But Noreen okay. is Noreen, so. <laughs> there you go. So now, if I can remember when I'm doing the intro of this, it's Noreen. Aaron.Noreen. Okay. Yep. I think it's, I see R-E-N-E, and I think of the French spelling of Renee. Hmm, okay. And so. I, I love Renee's. I know okay. people are like, what do you have against Renee's? No Renee. No, it's not. <laughs> that was a blowback you got from the book. That was the only thing. <laughs> Nothing else. It was just <laughs> Renee. Um, okay, so you're back. I'm back. And it's... And you were gone for five months. About five months to the day. Five months exactly. I got to Qatar on May 1st, and I left months are hard. I left uh, October 1st, I believe. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So here's a little backstory, a little 
pre-show banter that I it it didn't go by in the blink of an eye because mm-hmm. all of a sudden because I was following online at Aaron dot Noreen <laughs> <laughs> there you go and uh, kept seeing the updates and everything then all of a sudden it was like oh I'm back yep. it was like oh wait you haven't been gone that long uh, this is yeah. true the summer went fast we're okay since we'll go down the rabbit hole what was the average temp while you were there i have never felt heat so intense um so i'll put it this way right as i was leaving so um toward the end of september it started to get a little bit cooler and there was a day where i and it was always cool inside you know with the ac blasting but there was a day where i realized i was walking around with my jacket all day long even when i was outside which was really unusual and so i pop open my weather app just to be like oh wow you know it must be cooling down like yeah. why why am i wearing my jacket it's because it had gotten under 100 degrees <laughs> So when you get back here, you you buy big puffy jackets because you're like, holy crap, it's 75. Yeah, it was. I luckily when I first got back here to Knoxville, it was still in that heat wave, yeah. and so I had a, a week or so to kind of ease me into it. <laughs> Reacclimate. Now, now that the temperature has dropped, yeah, I'm, I'm struggling a little. That's hilarious. <laughs> uh, so what was? Do so you think about the, yeah. Let's see. In um, the hottest I felt was about 120 degrees. Um, wow. Yeah, it's it's like that feeling when you open the oven, you know, and that yeah. heat blasts you in the face. That's what it was like when you would go from indoors to outdoors. Plus, it was humid there because it's a peninsula and we were right on the water. So it would be like the heat from the oven blasting you in the face and that feeling of when you open like a greenhouse <laughs> and you go into a green. And so, I mean, immediately, like your, your sunglasses would fog up. Your phone, you know, your phone in your hand would immediately fog up. So yeah. you can't see anything. Now you're blind. You're out in the heat. You're immediately sweating. You can't oh text. God. You got to. You're wiping everything down. You're just trying to get as quick as you can into hey. the next building with AC. Hell, your phone can't register your thumbs because there's too much sweat on it. Exactly. So to pull in another sport, uh, so being here is like spring training for being there. Yes. It's the warm up for right. <laughs> pun unintended warm up. <laughs> uh, so when you were going, you were. I'm trying to think of the optimistically I don't want to say curious but like optimistically you weren't hesitant to go over there because you were worried how you were talking about how you would fit into the culture and Mm -hmm. everything but you had but you were positive about it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, positively so some people have a resting bitch face I have resting positivity (laughs) It's just my natural state. Yeah. <laughs> it's the state that I go to in distress is just everything's going to be okay and the world is beautiful. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, no, I mean, I was really excited to get over there. I knew that it was going to be unlike anything I had experienced, yes. uh, you know, in this Western culture. And I was right. Um, but, you know, everybody there eats food and breathes air and drinks right. water. And if they wear pants, they put them on one foot at a time, you know, one leg at a time, just like we do. So... Uh, you know, anywhere, that's the beautiful thing about travel is anywhere you go oh, in the yeah. world, you realize like, oh, we're <laughs> cool. We're all just humans. Yes. It's the little things that make us yeah. different. Yeah. Well, that's a weird thing. When I try, this is going to sound, maybe sound weird, but this is the, I'm trying, trying to do the positive thing. Whenever I would go to places, I would try to be a happy polite southern person Mm -hmm. to try and crack the stereotype Mm -hmm. that we're not all knuckle dragon idiots (laughs) down here so it it was very uh i had to be very aware i think if that makes sense yeah to be Uh, to ramp it up to 110 percent instead of 100 percent. sure yeah and because there weren't many americans there where where there was a very multinational is that a word um okay people from just so the gym I was working at, I think they had about 50 different countries represented in their gym membership. Okay. Um, fascinating, you know, just people from all over. But there were only, gosh, I could probably count on one hand the Americans that okay. I met. I was going to, that was on down the list of how many expats were there. And so, yeah, but and it was, yeah, you felt like you're representing your country. And yeah. so you want to be a good representative of, of your country. Yeah. yeah. How many... So 50 co- countries represented, were there a lot of people from there? Like I, in that region, because mm-hmm. it's so burgeoning, because it's so rich, mm-hmm. 
are there a lot of locals or is it kind of people moving there for industry and business? Yeah, great question. So um, I can only really speak for uh, Qatar and yeah. and I didn't know the history before I went over there yeah. and I'm going to probably butcher this. This is like That's okay. Doha history for dummies, I guess, through my interpretation. <laughs> but um, the the country didn't have a lot of wealth until about the 70s. Yeah. Like um, until about the 70s, the city of Doha, which is this, you know, beautiful, amazing city with skyscrapers and yeah. ridiculous architecture. Now, I believe the what somebody told me was in the 70s, there was a Holiday Inn. Yeah, that was, that was I, it. Would, I have no doubt. Yeah. yeah. And so then they realized that they had natural gas um, yeah. and natural gas, liquid natural gas is the big thing in uh, Doha. And so the government, you know, became ridiculously wealthy. And then the locals all, for the most part, work for the uh, liquid natural da- gas companies. So the locals, you know, were swept up in, in that um, riches. And right. then the country, the government was smart. The uh, royal family, you know, okay. that, that is the government, um, was smart enough to go, all right, we have trillions of dollars. If we don't spread out the wealth just a little bit, you yeah. know, just give a little bit to the people, then they're probably going to have an uprising. So um, the government is fairly generous with um, local native Qatari people. And, okay. you know, so they get, you know, they get paid a little bit for just being yeah. Qatari or, you know, the, the loans are um, really good uh or you yeah. can it's easier to get housing there's a lot of perks to being a native qatari okay. qatari person um that being said it's really hard to be a qatari native even so if uh, i knew people who's you know maybe both of their parents were egyptian and my friend was born in qatar but has an egyptian passport okay because they don't they, they don't let a lot of people become Qatari citizens because it is so beneficial. Um, So you asked, uh, you know, are there a lot of natives? Yes. They all mostly work for, they're all quite wealthy. Yeah. You know, probably not all. Most of them are quite wealthy. Um, It is the wealthiest country per capita in the world. Qatar is. Um, And so they're quite wealthy. Uh, A lot of them work for the liquid natural gas companies in one way or another. Which means that the locals aren't, as you and I wouldn't be, aren't interested in doing the more, uh, you know, middle to lower class jobs. So okay. that's why there's been this, you know, big influx of uh, basically how it went is the cuttery people were the top, top, right. you know, first class, whatever, if you're going to talk class systems. And then the expat, the educated expats who are the engineers or... <laughs> the CrossFit coaches, you know, whatever, yeah, the, yeah. the people from, you know, European um, or just not necessarily European, but, you know, the ones that are that are educated, that have the like what we would call a white collar job um, would be kind of your your se- if if a cuttery person and then a European engineer were to get in a fight, the cuttery person would still win. OK, but but the, the European might not go to jail. <laughs> Then, <laughs> and, and we are, and this was a hard thing to wrap my mind around. It's not necessarily a class system of, say, respect. Everybody there was very respectful of, of okay. each other, but it's just the way it was that the people who ran the restaurants, who were in the hospitality industry, who were in the hotels, were largely Filipino. Huh. And, and again, I mean, there was, there was a lot of respect. Yeah. I mean, yeah. everybody treated everyone well, but that's just the way it was. Cuttery natives aren't interested in having those jobs. They're better than what most of the Filipino people would find in the Philippines. Yeah. So it benefits everyone. And then most of like the Uber drivers, taxi drivers um, were mostly from uh, India. <laughs> yeah, you think <laughs> India, um, <laughs> sometimes African countries. Um, okay. And then construction workers were also from like India, African countries, stuff like that. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. But still not a lot of Americans over there. Not a lot of Americans. Yeah. That's interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Like, also, I understand Africa, I understand India, yeah, the the F- Filipino, that's, yeah, I, I'm just trying to do the logistics in my brain of like, okay, I wonder how, how that, I want. How that got started? Yes. Yeah. How did yeah. they even think yeah, to start coming Yeah, how did it, like, there? fall into place? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, no, this is, it's probably just 
somebody came over with their family, right. did something, it was successful, and then where I got back, they were like, hey, this is awesome over right. here. Like, come on over. Yeah. Like, yeah. And especially it, with the internet. I mean, it's, yeah. oh my gosh, we just got dive bombed by some pigeons. Yeah. We survived. Are you okay? Yeah. Poof, I'm okay. This is, <laughs> this is our territory. <laughs> I'm just tech- checking the head because I don't have a lot of coverage area <laughs> here to, to block. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So they did a lot of that stuff. And so at the gym, you know, into a CrossFit membership's not cheap. You know, we like to joke that the fittest man and woman on earth are actually the fittest man and woman with a disposable income. Yeah. Um, And so in the CrossFit gyms, yeah, it would be uh, Cuttery Natives and expats who were there uh, doing, you know, (laughs) engineering jobs and whatnot. I'm just going to pretend that we're not being attacked by Yeah, they're getting a little little close. It's like I, I made... I, th- I think I had hamburger meat last night. It might taste really well right now. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, uh, okay, so the most expensive, the CrossFit mm-hmm. within the gym itself. So, yeah, so that's why the in the CrossFit gym, you know, we had all these nationalities represented. Yeah. And, um, and it was cool to talk to. And, and most people, even when they come over, they usually work for in some degree for the uh, liquid natural gas companies. Okay. Or a lot of people were there as... Um, Qatar Airways mm-hmm. pilots, and a lot of people were there uh, who worked for the hospitals. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. They, uh, I'm trying to think, there's, well, hell, there's no ginger way to put it. <laughs> I also just watched some dude stop mid, mid, uh, mid walk because a, a pigeon almost hit him in the face. Man, we are in their territory. Yeah, they, Man, this is like, I feel like Tippy Hedren right now. Do you get that reference? Nope. The birds, mm. Rod Taylor and mm-hmm. Tippy Hedren. Yeah, I don't like poor movies. Oh. Yeah, sorry. It's a terrifying movie. I saw it at uh, Tennessee Theater one time, and they had cranked the audio so loud, I had to hold my hands over my ears. And I had taken my little cousin to it, mm. who was like six. I was cool. like, just put your fingers in your ears, boy. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> we're not leaving early. <laughs> Hell no, we're not leaving early. <laughs> <With it. laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Ginger. Ginger. Is everyone in like their own, like is there, I'm going to use New York or San Francisco. Is there Little Italy? Is there uh, mm. Chinatown? Is there, is there Are all the people kind of split up into their own area? Like mm-hmm. the Filipino people who own the restaurants, mm-hmm. they live in a certain area. Uh, y- I'm going to go ahead and say yes, but it's more of an assumption than anything because I, I didn't have a car and so okay. I didn't really get to see a whole lot of the the big city of Doha. What I can tell yeah. you is that um, the expat area where most of the expats lived, where my gym was, was, yeah. um, you know, these beautiful skyscraper condos, brand new, okay. like literally the islands that we were on was a man-made island. Um, right, right. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. and so that's where, yeah, so if you have money that's where you live a lot of the cuttery natives uh lived in these neighborhoods that to us they would look like compounds but they were like gated neighborhoods okay. um, basically uh, the houses are so different there it's not like there's lawns you know so yeah looking at them it would be like what is that yeah nice looking military style compound but it was neighborhoods you know okay and um, it's style of how also i assume that they have really strong winds or storms yeah so they probably have to build to withstand stuff like that. So they're not rebuilding all the time. Right. And there's no wood, really. So it, oh, yeah, their houses, tr- yeah, they're just, their houses look completely different than ours do because there's no, you know, picket fence. There's no right. lawn. There's no, you know, wooden right. houses or anything like that. So they, um, they all look, I don't even know how to describe it. They all look um, kind of sand colored and, and like yeah. they're made out of. Well. Not to Isn't go it? down a weird side street, but uh, the big thing when Osama bin Laden, you know, when they showed his compound and stuff, they're like, oh, no, this is actually like a luxury compound. Well, like, and they're beautiful on the inside. And, okay, know, and a lot of them I, are beautiful on the outside, too. I don't mean to too. analogize yeah. that, but for any normal person, it's like they know what that looked like. Okay. And the, any normal way. Where we <laughs> well, I mean, you they, just, sh- they you sh- just refer to like normal people as Western people. Sorry. <laughs> Anybody who watches the news... In the Western Hemisphere refers to... I am so uncomfortable, but I love it. Let's keep rolling with it. I like that you're like, 
all the normal people think of Osama bin Laden when they think of... No, 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 no. Oh, no, no. I'm not talking about Osama. I'm talking about the style of the house. I know. You're trying to. All right. <laughs> Here it's we okay. go again. It's okay. You got to get uncomfortable sometimes. It, um, no, it's, no, I'm you're thinking right. of if somebody yes. is in China and they saw CN, CNN, BBC, right. they all showed the compound mm -hmm. he lived in. So my thought is, no, it's not that. It's more of... The way you're describing it, that's what it sounds like to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, they do have to yeah. withstand dust storms and sandstorms yeah. and high winds, and um, they just had a bunch of flooding there, which is really unusual. Okay. Um, but yeah, and so anyway, beautiful on the inside, um, yeah. and also still beautiful on the outside, but yeah. just not what we think of here, especially in the South, um, as a quote beautiful home. But they really are. Yeah. Trust me, I've seen McMansions around here. <laughs> I would much rather take a house over there than one of those yeah. crappy McMansions. Yeah. No offense to my friends who live and Mac McMansions. Some this is like I'm going to I'm going to change the name of this podcast to uh Dodge the Pigeons. <laughs> okay, so they're really ornate uh but you didn't get did you get to go out and explore like nightlife or anything while you were over there? Or? Um no, and okay. not that there wasn't yes and no, not that there wasn't nightlife, but so uh it's hard for a business to get a liquor license um okay. really only as far as i could tell again i'm gonna get all these facts wrong but i as far as i experienced only hotels had yes. liquor license and so um the really nice restaurants would be in hotels but like okay. clubs wouldn't be in hotels yeah. um, I'm, 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 i was trying to go down the path of is there kind of like an art scene there or like i'm just yeah. thinking of like what 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 is what do do? <laughs> some of the culture mm -hmm. around there like yeah. what 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 does everybody do for fun? Uh, good question. Uh, they they travel. This is going to be a dick answer, but even the cutteries would say for fun they go to other countries. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, but no, there's uh, let's see. There are some art museums. Um, okay. There was like the um, museum of. Islamic art, yeah, MIA Museum of Islamic okay. Art. It was beautiful, um, and yeah, people go out to eat and okay. and they travel a lot. Food is a big part of their yeah. culture. Okay, and they travel. That's hilarious, <laughs> but it's also the the weird thing of travel is you know here in America, here in the Western culture, that's no, normal just, people. That's normal. Oh, I, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like we'll go to Memphis for the weekend, mm -hmm. which is five or six hours away. Mm -hmm. And I talked to a friend of mine who lives in Scotland and I was mentioned doing that. And he was just like, that's too far away. <laughs> I was like, you're an idiot. I would be in Italy every other weekend. Right. Like I would, what are you talking about? Right. So there it's, it, I'm happy that they embrace like, no, we can just hop on something and go. Yeah. Like, yeah, just just do it. Right. And before the, the um, is it a boycott? What do they call it? I'm blanking now. But anyway, the whole of the Middle East is kind of mad at Qatar right now. And so um, you used to be able to just hop on a 45-minute flight and go over to Dubai. But you can't fly directly from um, Doha to Dubai right now. Right now. Maybe okay. they'll kiss and make up. But anyway, Kuwait was the only place in the Middle East that we could get to directly. Okay. Um, but yeah, so yeah, people. Did you go over to Kuwait? I did not. Oh, shoot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were on a mission. You were working. You're yeah, like, yeah, I was you're putting five months. Yeah, I know. You were putting in work. Exactly. Yeah. Where did Lee go? A friend of mine just did a, she's a teacher, or she's getting her PhD and she's doing a residency in Norway or Sweden or mm -hmm. somewhere. I was like, oh, so where all are you going? Mm -hmm. And she was like, oh no, it's all work. Mm. I'm not going anywhere. I was like, man, right. I would just, I would just not sleep for five. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but you're doing physical activity. Her or I would be sitting at a computer like, oh no, I can just not sleep. Right. Okay. Uh, the people, the people that are, was it in a, I can't remember, was it an established place or was, had they just built it? The gym that I was working yeah. at? Yeah. So uh, CrossFit T23 had been, it's been open for about two years. Okay. Super successful. So they were opening their second location, which is called T23 Unloaded. And that's what I was, I was brought over to kind of okay. get the unloaded gym going and off the ground and get that program go and get the staff trained up and all okay, that. Okay, so you were, so you, did you staff it or did they have people that they already kind of pulled over from the other place? Uh, a little bit of both. Um, okay. So yeah, once, once I got there, they kind of said, 
you know, well, here's here's some coaches that you can work with. But then I also had uh, some influence in bringing in oh, okay. other people. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and it, same thing at where you're. you're your coaching staff, was it mainly Americans or was it people kind of from all over too? Uh, so let's see, at, yeah, um, at um, T23, where were they from? So one of the owners was Jordanian. Um, there was another American coach, two guys from the UK, a girl from Scotland, girl from the UK. My, oh, and then oh, another guy from the UK. And then over at Unloaded, France. UK. No Australians? Whenever I travel, I always bump into Australians. That's why I assume. We had some Australian members. Okay. Thank yeah. goodness. Yeah. They have to be represented. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, every time I go somewhere, I'll bump into somebody that's like, wait, you're from Australia. What the hell are you doing here, <laughs> man? Like, it's so funny to me. They, I feel like they just travel all the I time. I think they do a better. It's funny because Australia, like America, is pretty isolated, you know, yeah. from other countries. Yeah. And so, whereas in Europe, you can just hop in a car and go to another country. Like, yeah. Australia, honestly, is worse than us. We could at least drive to Canada or Mexico if we really yeah. wanted to get a stamp on our passport. Um, but, yeah, Australia has to get on a plane and fly elsewhere. And, yeah, I think they do a better job than we do of that. Yeah, and they only have, I think, like three, maybe four major cities. In Australia? Well, I'm, th I'm thinking of, like, a New York or, you know, like, in America, you have, you know, New York, Los Angeles, okay. Chicago, sure. Atlanta... Miami, you know, you can rattle off a yeah, bunch. Sure. Okay. But I, I think it's because a lot of the people I know there are from Perth. Yeah. Or Sydney, from Sydney. Melbourne. Or Melbourne. Yeah. And, and it's like, I know there are other places. Right. The funniest thing, one of my friends told me, we were talking about Outback Steakhouse here. And he was like, and I said, one of my friends was like, man, I love the Alice Springs chicken. And I asked my buddy, he's like, what's Alice Springs like? He was like, it's nothing. <laughs> it's like an empty train station in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, it's because it's in the outback. Alice yeah. Springs is one of the places close to Uluru. Yeah. But, yeah. but my friend from Perth was like, where did they come up? I was like, dude, they probably just threw a dart <laughs> right? on a map and were like, that sounds nice. Let's do Alice Springs. <laughs> Oh, my God. Now I'm not going to get in trouble with the Aussies. I'm not saying you don't have big cities. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's right. You've already offended quite a few people, starting yeah. with my mother. So, you know, let's just keep that. No, I'm kidding. She likes you. Oh. <laughs> she doesn't like how you say her name. Oh. Noreen. That, she'll like that. That was a good southern accent. Good. <laughs> um, okay, so staff... Mainly UK and UK. American, mm -hmm. a lot of UK and mm -hmm. Americans. I don't think we got into that. I didn't realize CrossFit, is it big in the UK or mm -hmm. kind of still growing or? Yeah, I mean, you know, so yeah, CrossFit started in California and slowly yeah. made its way east across our country and then has, you know, probably the first place it jumped was over to Europe and it's gotten really big in Europe and now it's um, creeping over, you know, in the Middle East and in uh Asia and stuff like that. So, I mean, really, anywhere in the world you go, yeah. you're pretty much going to find a CrossFit gym. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, what? I'm trying to think. Was the I'm trying to think how to word my answer. Was the suit, food scene kind of varied, or was it mm -hmm. leaning towards one thing or something another, or was it? Mm -hmm. Um. Sh yeah, varied. I. I guess I would say, so from what I can tell, yeah. I don't know how, and this is going to sound oh, and now the real ignorant, yeah, but I don't know what they ate before they were able to fly food from other countries. Because so you would go to the grocery store over there yeah. and you would go to buy meat and it would be like, and they, they would label it, they would be like, do you want beef from... Australia? Do we want beef from the U.S.? Do you want beef from Ireland? You know, because it's yeah. a desert. Like, there's yeah. no, there's no yeah. cattle. A literal I mean, food desert. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, so anyway, none of the food in the grocery store was all that good because it had been shipped from all over the world. So right. it would go bad in two days. Same with the vegetables too. You know, again, it's not. You can't do a lot of agriculture in the desert or not efficiently. Right. So the vegetables would be, you know, shipped from Spain and, and just all over the place um, and would go bad in a few days. And they, they didn't taste very good, you know, because yeah. like all, any out of season produce that we get here in the U.S., they're picked before they're ripe and they're shipped halfway across the world and they just don't taste very good. Yeah. So the grocery shopping in Qatar was not good. Okay. Toward the end of my five months, 
I was eating uh, sliced cheese, deli meats, and sugar-free chocolate bars. Oh my god! And peanut butter. Oh my <laughs> and god! And eggs and eggs. Um, but you would go to the restaurants, and you know a restaurant can get a fresh shipment of meat or vegetables or whatever literally every single day. Yeah. Uh, so the food at the restaurants would be fresh and delicious, and you know they were better cooks than me. Um, but it's hard for me to describe what really, and so the, especially where I was eating in the expat area, yeah. they would kind of try to cater to all different um, nationalities and okay. tastes. And so even you could go to this beautiful restaurant with um, an incredibly ornate buffet, and it would yeah. have sushi, and it would have Indian curry, and it would have shawarma, and it would have um, Asian stir fry, and it would have. Um, I mean, what a pasta. So just a little bit of everything. Okay. Yeah. So a little bit more. A high-end golden corral. I what you're telling. Wow. I'm yeah. just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you not, just, you know, one or two notches above a golden corral. <laughs> just one or two, oh, one or two giant leaps giant and bounds leaps. and notches. So there was a sushi night at this um, one restaurant. So the restaurants are in these beautiful, ornate hotels with, you know, amazing chandeliers and just... Uh, no matter what I wore, I always felt underdressed. Yeah. And uh, on sushi night, they would just, it was like all you could eat sushi, like amazing quality of sushi. They would bring it out to you. One course would be the sashimi would come out in a literal ice bowl. It was a, a bowl, a very large bowl made of ice that they wow. would bring. And each table would get their own individual, you know, bowl of ice um, or ice bowl. And, and then they would bring out another course with, uh, like, dry ice. So, you know, it would mm-hmm. have the, the whatever, foam, not foam, um, when it's like fog, you know, coming yeah. off of it. Um, just incredibly ornate. Amazing yeah. dining experiences, yeah. Spared no expense. Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> yeah. It was really cool. Yeah, I was curious. Yeah, like, so I'm guessing with the varying of food at a place like that, it's, it's more about the food. It's less, less about the chef. It's not really a chef culture. Mm. Because it was, you know what I mean, like yeah, I, not that I was aware of. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, well, okay. So good question. Um, do you know the the guy in the meme? You can't see what I'm doing, of course, because it's a podcast. But the Salt Bay guy, yes. Who? Um, so the meme, of course, is usually uh, gay jokes, but he's got his, you know, hand cocked. Really? Well, I, sometimes, you know, no, but it's I like just, a sprinkle. You, you know? know what's funny? The only memes I've seen of that is more making fun of Leonardo DiCaprio in the picture. <laughs> Like how he's looking at the dude. No, you're thinking of Leonardo DiCaprio in the martini glass where no, he's no, got no, his no. eyes raised. There's one of the Salt Bay ones where Leno DiCaprio is sitting there and uh, the Salt Bay is going to... So that's the only one I've seen. I okay. haven't seen the other one. Well, it's so. a very effeminate gesture yeah. to have your elbow cocked up like this and your wrist cocked and, uh, you know, whatever, sprinkling yeah. salt. Anyway, Salt Bay has a restaurant there. And really? it is so good. Really? So good. What is the, is it varied food or is it special? It's ju- and so it's this really cool uh, theme. You know, it's, it's uh, you feel like you're walking into kind of a, like, um, what's it called? Where they, like, they've got these big heavy metal doors, almost like yeah. you're walking into where they, like, hang meat or whatever, you know? Oh, so it's kind of like butcher. Sh- yeah, meat locker. That's what I'm looking yeah. for. Um, the servers are all, like, males with handlebar mustache, and they've got, like, this costume of and, like, a hat that they wear, and I think they've got, like, suspenders or whatever. And it's very much like the table side um, show where they've got... Um, blow torches and they're like cooking your meal with the blow torch in front of you and doing this like oh juggling God. of blow torches. Um, oh my God. The best thing there is that they'll bring out this big pan that has like a uh, sizzling butter, like boiling butter that is crackling and popping. And then they'll slice the raw meat super, super thin and they'll put the meat in the butter. And so right Whoa. there at your table side, this meat is cooking in butter. And then they take a French baguette and break it into slices and put it, uh, you know, bread side down in the butter. And so then they serve you this amazing steak oh that has God. been cooked at table side in butter with this amazing fresh baguette Stop that is soaked to me up right all the now. butter. It's oh so my God. good. It's so good. That's insane. Okay, so I need to, let me look up Qatar flights real quick. <laughs> he's got some other restaurants. I, I think he's got two other restaurants, other places in the world. But one okay. of them is in Doha. Yeah, and oof. I hate to, every time I put seasoning on something, 
I don't intentionally do it, do it that way, <laughs> but I do it, you know, like just from the side or right. something. And it's so close now that I'm like, oh my God. Just might as well let it roll down your forearm. Yeah. And it, I hate to say it, when you first did that, I thought you were doing the uh, raptor meme from <laughs> Jurassic Park. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, That's so food, food. Mm-hmm. food is kind of the big, the big, the BFD there. I mean, I wouldn't say that they are a food culture. You know, you think of Italy as being a food culture. Right. Um, in Doha, they certainly have... Really, you can get an amazing dining experience in yeah. Doha, and I'm sure Dubai is the same way. Well, I'm just thinking, like, well, but going back to the grocery thing, you know, if it was very hard yeah, to cook stuff at home, then yeah. I think maybe the culture over there may be they're used to having to go out to eat or well, and go to a the common natives, area or something. Yeah, for, and the yeah. natives can certainly afford to, you know, oh, go yeah. out to eat for every meal, so, yeah. Yeah, you're right. I wonder what they did before. Good Lord. I mean, I don't know. I honestly don't Probably know. Probably a lot of, I would assume a lot of breads. I like guess you so. Can Flat break, breads, yeah. Yeah, you can break a lot of bread. Yeah. Bake a lot of bread. I'm thinking of, but even that, getting the... Where do the grains come? Yeah. 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 I mean, certainly it wasn't sand as far as the, well, some places it was sand as far yeah. as the eye can see, but um, you could... You could grow. There were farms. They're maybe not quite what we think of as farms, yeah. but there are a few farms here and there. Yeah, I wonder how hard it would also to be to have a greenhouse because the mm-hmm. temperature is so strong. Like, would you have to do some kind of weird reinforcement? But then, it, uh, shoot, I might have to write down. Well, maybe you can help me remember. Uh, how many fast food places or chains from... America, mm. did you see over there? The other thing I want to ask is, uh, I've already lost it. I'll get back to solar panels, but let's let's didn't, go into fast food. Like, did, uh, I didn't see many solar panels. Doesn't mean that they weren't there, but I just was not aware of them. Yeah. Fast food. Um, I I mean, I'm the type of person that I'm not going to eat at an American oh. joint when I'm overseas, and so I just really no. wasn't very aware of them. There was, let's see, there was Domino's, there was Witch Witch. Um, which which mm-hmm. huh. what else Applebee's yeah um, <laughs> only the finest <laughs> there had to be more than that yeah, yeah. but I just, and McDonald's a burger I mean there had to be I wasn't really aware of them but yeah there had to be okay yeah oh no I haven't had fast food in 13 years so no I'm, I'm not all about it but I'm just curious how much it seeps into mm-hmm. developing places like that because mm-hmm. We're getting a Wild Wings Cafe here on Gay Street, and I'm still not 100% sure how I feel about that. Mm. It's going to be two stories. The only positive is one of my friends said, well, the good part is it'll probably pull some of the business from the local places to where you then just won't have to wait an hour and a half to get into Stock uh, and Barrel. Oh, yeah? Okay. And a friend, of, I met, good- the, met the guy who's the GM over at Downtown Groom Brewery, and he was like, since Black Horse opened up, they were a little bit worried. He's like, no, nope, we're doing the same numbers. Hmm. It's just people aren't having to wait. Oh, that's nice. Because people who have to wait just go over to Black Horse. Yeah. We still seat the same amount of people. That's nice. See, See, there's enough for everyone. All works together. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's why I was curious. Like, which witch? That's one I had never heard of which witch until they put up one here two years ago mm-hmm. or something. They, and everybody made a big deal about it. They do a mean, uh, like, lettuce-wrapped sandwich, and I'm all about oh. that. So, yeah, they do. It's like Jimmy John's will wrap it in lettuce, but no offense, Jimmy John's. They don't do quite as good of a job. Which, which? They're, How, they're, however a, proud they, spo- they're a proud sponsor of Ramble Man. Oh, what? Sorry. <laughs> Awkward. Uh, no, but, yeah, however <laughs> they train their employees to wrap that iceberg lettuce around the stuff at which, which, they do a good job. Okay. Mm-hmm. Starbucks. Yes, yeah, there was Starbucks. I was going to say yeah, there was Starbucks. Let's be. see, Starbucks, Caribou Coffee, uh, Costa Coffee. Is that in America? I don't know if that's American or not. Um, I don't know. That I know that one. Pete's. No, I don't think so. But yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah it doesn't. Surpri- yeah, it's, it's, there surely had to be a Starbucks over there. Oh yeah. Yeah, hey, they're yeah. just everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> have uh, do you listen to a lot of comedy? Uh, yes, but probably less than you. Okay. <laughs> Lewis Black has this great joke about a Starbucks across from a Starbucks. Mm. And I think it was in Houston, Texas. He walked out of a Starbucks and directly across the corner, 
He's like, there's another Starbucks. I mean, again, it's probably like here on Gay Street. Like if somebody, if they walk into a Starbucks and there's yeah. a line, they just go to the other Starbucks. Yeah. There's plenty of people who want Starbucks. Oh my God. Although I'm, I'm the more aggressive version of you and that I'm like, or you could go to a local coffee shop and enjoy <laughs> it while you're there instead of going to Starbucks and. Shout out to my coffee and chocolate yeah. drink that I'm sipping oh on right God. now. Yeah, that's, there's another weird thing. Now there's two coffee shops on the same street and they're both seem to be doing fine. Are you talking about coffee and chocolate? Yeah, coffee and chocolate and then Union, uh, Pearl on Union up here. Oh, I haven't which been is, there yet. It's owned by the people who own Old City Java and Wild Love Bakehouse. So they have Wild Love baked goods in there. Oh, cool. It's really good. Also, I'm so glad you mentioned Union. That bookstore is still there, right? Yeah, they expanded. I'm going to go buy some books after yeah. this. Yeah, Union Avenue Books. They took over the space next door and expanded. That's awesome. Yeah. That's what you want to see from a yes. local bookstore. Hell yeah. Expand. They've been doing some good things. They've been doing some uh, signings and having speakers and stuff. So great. Come through. I'm going to go. I just, I still cannot get on board. I'm half millennial, half Gen X. I'm, I'm right there on the line. Eight, 1983, shout out. Um, but I just can't get on board with the Kindle books if I'm traveling if I'm on a plane sure maybe if there's just no access to a paper book but yeah like I want to read Brene Brown's new book also I'm kind of anti Amazon right now so I'm just like damn it I got to get over to bookstore I'm gonna do it today I can't do the Kindle or any of those either but when I travel I will take it's it's a joy for me when I am preparing to travel to figure out which five books mm -hmm. I'm bringing with me. I love doing that. Mm -hmm. And I usually bring two on the plane with me. Yep. And, uh, yeah, still, I can't do it. Anti-Amazon, what's, what's up with Amazon? Is it how they're treating their workers and yeah, stuff? Yeah, it's, it's the workers. It's the way they, uh, you know, especially when it comes to books, the way they, like, oh, drop yeah. the prices of the books and put everyone else out of business and then raise the prices again. It's capitalism. I get it. It doesn't mean I have to support it. I'm trying to remember. If I can find it, I'll send it to you. A friend of mine found a website that buys books wholesale from publishers. So they buy in bulk, mm -hmm. massive, and they a lot of times beat Amazon's prices mm -hmm. and they benefit the authors and the publishers more than Amazon does. Mm -hmm. Like they don't bully the publishers and the authors. They actually support their publishers and authors. I got you. She reads a lot of books and her husband's getting his PhD in literature, former guest of the podcast, Lance. Nice. That he's having to read 400 books. She's a bartender at Pretentious and I saw her last night. She's Kay. awesome. Yeah. I, they don't know who I am, but no, I just waved at them. She was giving me yeah. a hard time. <laughs> 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 she was giving my buddy Sean and I a hard time last night. Um, but yeah, uh, whatever that website is, it's a lot better. Cool. But I can't, I can't remember right off the top of my head what He'll it is. He'll tell you in the intro. Yeah. yeah. By the time I'll, you're listening to these words, you'll already know what it is. Yeah, you will already know what it is. They'll probably be the sponsor of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, I figured... But it could also be like solar panel farms or something like that, you know, out a little bit I away mean, from. Yeah, there's a lot of smart people over there. And so I'm willing to bet that those things are all there. Um, yeah. But I just didn't know about it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so when you were going over there, and I can't remember if you mentioned this on the podcast or you posted about it. We're going to transition. Bum -ba -dum. Uh, was there a guy... <laughs> that you were moving over there for, or did I misread or miss see? Or I have a weird memory. Yeah, no, uh, you are accurate in that it was a guy that I was dating at the time Boom. who um, was also coaching CrossFit overseas, okay. and so I was like, "That's a great idea. I'm going to coach CrossFit overseas as well." Okay. okay. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. My memory's not totally gone. Yeah. Okay, but <laughs> spoiler alert. Hard left turn. I'm, I might have to cut out the low part at the beginning so it can <laughs> it can switch into like like the reveal. So you went over there. What happened with the dude? No. Well, same thing that happened with all the other dudes in my life. They were all wonderful. They just weren't quite the right fit because I'm okay. gay. Oh. Boom! There we go. <laughs> It'd be funny if the mics just cut out right now. And then and be like, wait, 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 wait. Where we go? Okay. Yeah. So, so great guy just um yeah great i have had uh, many amazing wonderful boyfriends in my life whom i've okay. had a lot of good times with um and then just it, so yeah go ahead ask away did you 
All right, I'm going to rapid fire like yes. a few questions in a row. Mm-hmm. Did you already always kind of know this? Mm-hmm. Uh, is it part of what prompted you to go over there? Okay. And did you find someone over there? Great questions. Okay. Uh, so I wish I could be the spokesperson for everyone no, in the fine. LGBT community. I can't, but I can speak for myself in that I always well okay so i was raised uh you know in society and oh, yeah. whatever just straight as the norm and biologically i guess straight has to be the norm otherwise our species <laughs> would not continue uh so you know straight is straight is the default and yeah. um my parents are amazing open-minded you yeah. know people but they are straight yeah. um and so you know, I was just whatever raised in the late eighties and early nineties, like any other American kid. And, and, uh, I don't remember being exposed to a lot of, you know, non straight couples growing up. Okay. Um, and so at the time I just didn't have the narrative to put into words like how I felt, um, all my, yeah. you know, and whenever we would have slumber parties, you know, like we would giggle about boys and stuff. And I always have been, and still am attracted to males. Okay. And so it was easy for me to, you know, kind of giggle along. I also had feelings for my girlfriends that I didn't know at the time were unusual, oh, but yeah. looking back now, I can realize like, Oh, I also had a crush on her. I just, okay didn't really know it at the time and I didn't know that how I felt was unusual at the time it's it's a weird thing because you know the another default is that you're 18 you're an adult mm-hmm. you're 25 <laughs> it, like I, I feel like it's almost like 25 like everybody is because you're talking about that at that age you have so much crap going on at that time mm-hmm. you, you know you have puberty you have you, how learning how to transition from a child to a young adult and dealing with your what's that said with your parents and then you just have all these chemicals going mm-hmm. crazy in your brain it's this may be the dumbest most obvious thing i've ever said being a teenager i just want to grab every teenager and go i know i'm old and you don't believe me but everything is going to be okay right <laughs> You are going to feel like you're swimming in a sea of fog right now. Right. And that's okay. Just, and I have t- had that talk with my cousins. Like one of my cousins had a really hard time in high school. I was like, just duck your head, find your friends, find your people, yeah. duck your head and get through it. Because right. guess what? The minute you get out, you don't ever have to see those people again. Yeah. They're giving you a hard time. Right. Yeah. So. Everyone needs to follow hashtag it gets better. Yes. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> but no, it's the uh, being confused about you're giggling along, giggling with all the other girls about boys, and at the same time you're feeling conflicted. Mm-hmm. And, and who knows? Like you probably weren't the only uh, person in that group that felt the exact same way. Yes, statistically, probably not. Um, no. And and I truly believe that sexuality is a spectrum. You know, and I land somewhere in the middle. I have plenty of girlfriends who, you know, their whole life, they were never interested in the opposite sex, you know? Yeah. And so, uh, you know, the old gold star lesbians. Um, oh, my God. They <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. Okay. I'm going to teach you all the lingo. No, I'm, um, no, I'm friends with, ton- <laughs> with plenty of gold star lesbians. No, I, I'm just going to have to ask Katie how she feels about being called a gold star. <laughs> <human. laughs> I don't know if she'll enjoy that like or not. I feel that's a term of endearment. I think what, it is. So one of my friends is writing a PhD on growing up queer in the South okay. right now. She's about to have to... Def- Knock on wood. I hope she gets to defend it soon because cool. she, she's struggling with her advisor. Mm. Her advisor's pregnant and is about to leave and seems to not care. It's mm. like, oh, just do it next year. And she's mm. like, no, mm. no, luck, I'm Katie. done. Yeah. But anyway. And so, yeah. And, and yeah, and so I know plenty of uh, women and, you know, men yeah. who have never been attracted to the opposite sex. Again, I, I was attracted and still am attracted to men and men certainly seemed to find me attractive. And so it was just easier to, because that was the societal default. It was just like, Oh, well this is whatever it's doing. It seems fun. Um, I remember, I think the first time I ever heard about like a lesbian was I think Rosie O'Donnell sometime 
in am I gonna, that's the right yeah, yeah. Um, so sometime in like the late 90s or early 90s yeah and I remember being incredibly intrigued yeah and being like I know I like that that concept but I, I wasn't personally attracted to Rosie yeah so again there was more confusion because it was just like I like what you're doing there yeah but I'm not sure that you're my people but why am I so fascinated with this yeah and then, um, you know, I learned about Ellen and again, it was, and so then it was like a little bit more, it was like, okay, well she's, she's a little bit prettier. I'm a little bit more attracted to her and she's funny. Seems like a real badass, you know, but then, then it really wasn't until Ellen got married to Portia yeah. that I have read Portia de Rossi's, um, biography or autobiography. It's called, um, Unbearable Lightness. Um, probably read that book six or seven times okay um because it talks about like her struggle of you know growing up closeted and coming out and she had an eating disorder and all sorts of things like that but it wasn't until i realized like oh like funny blonde relatable ellen is with you know beautiful portia like oh being a lesbian can look like i'm i'm attracted there's nothing wrong with not no looking no. feminine but no. i am someone who presents very feminine and so to me it was just very confusing and so it wasn't until I really grew up and and was like oh and this sounds like a dumb revelation but like oh love can look like anything oh yeah yeah and so for and I think I thought that oh, okay if I if I'm gonna say that I'm gay I have to be like gold star gay you know okay. and so I was like I know that I'm not that yeah and so for many years I was like I think I'm bi I don't know I still I still just thought I was gonna get a Harry Potter like letter that was gonna tell me if I was oh or my not God. <laughs> now you just and came out as a nerd no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> everybody yeah, knows I'm, Harry Potter I'm, 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 um and yeah and so I never did get that Harry Potter letter but yeah. um I did finally start kissing girls and just realized well that I really th there was my letter right there because when, I really enjoyed that, that. like early 20 like when did yeah. you yeah, like uh, so, uh, early twenties. This wasn't like this. You hadn't. God, I know you said nothing's on, uh, uh, off the table. We're but out I'm in a trying public to think park. Of, he's feeling awkward. I know. I'm trying to think of. Oh, <laughs> oh my God! Don't say that. I lost my virginity to a boy at age. No, no, yeah. no, 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 no. It's like uh, this. It wasn't a snap, and it was this is it you have had experiences yes. before yeah, you just yeah, yeah. in the age of social media and everything it was just not something you presented online yeah which is another dumb statement <laughs> that we should have to do that crap but right you know what i mean yeah uh yeah and so i mean whenever people say you know sexual confusion or they're confused about their sexuality like it literally can just be so confusing yeah, yeah. because and really when it comes down to it I knew that I was pretty good at being straight. Like I, yeah. you know, I've been married. I've had lots of wonderful, wonderful boyfriends. Like I was not lying when I told them that I loved them. Like right. I have had amazing, wonderful times right. with the opposite gender. It just never quite, this is how I'll just, well, and so whenever I came out on Instagram, I used the analogy, it was like I was in the wrong career. And I think a lot of yeah. people can relate to that yeah. because sometimes you put your, you know, you're in a job and you're thinking, this is fine. You know, I'm making a paycheck. I'm, this is yeah. good. I've got a routine. I'm pretty good at it. I've been promoted, you know, but you're just not quite happy, but you're yeah. happy enough that it yeah. would be, it's scary to leave that job. It's almost like if you made a list of pros and cons, there's still enough in the pros yeah. column to keep you in that situation, even though there's con things that may have greater weight right. than some of the pros. Yes. Okay. And so I just kind of thought like, I don't, you know, let's just keep dating guys. Like I'm so, I'm good enough at it and I'm having a great time with them. Like I'll just yeah. eventually find yeah. the right one. Um, and then... But then I just realized that that was a really closed-minded way of thinking. And so it's like, well, I finally realized, like, I can date women and I can date men at the same time. And then you're, like, doubling your odds of finding the right person. You just <laughs> made a great statement. And we've also been spoon-fed the, the mantra of you got to find the one. Right. So that could be another thing that was right. holding you back on, like, well, I just haven't found the right, the right key to fit. You right. know, the right to unlock the door to my... Yeah. Wow, that's poetry. Unlock the door to my heart. <laughs> I need to put. Yeah. Anyway, that you. Yeah, that that's another like hindrance, like mm -hmm. a blinder holding you back. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Yeah. So you had had some experiences, but you were still defaulting on dudes. And yes, I just. Yeah. Um, because it felt like the lane you were supposed to be in. And it, yeah, and it definitely, I mean, let's face it, life is going to be a little bit more difficult for LGBTQIAQ PP. There's I can't other do all that. <laughs> I can't do all that. And um, even, I've even asked my friends, like, can you just say LGBTQ? No, that, that's fine. Yep. That's fine. You can put a that's plus fine. at the end. Anyway, yeah, it's, it's going to yeah. be harder. And I just, it took me 35 years of thinking if like why why would you ever pick the harder route if you're yeah. good enough at the easy route i had that discussion with a friend of mine when her little boy was three i said what happens if he turns out to be gay and she smacked the shit out of me my arm and i thought back then i was like oh man she's being prejudiced and i realized later on i was like no because that road it's so hard and you don't want to see your kid have to go through it. But I will yeah. tell you this. And, and so that's what I was scared of is I was, I was so that was also in like 96. Right. And we've come a hell of a long way since 96. And I tell you what I've learned too, is that no one can make you happy, but you. Yeah. And so I was, I was letting this fear that, society wouldn't accept me or yeah. you know just whatever I was letting that hold me back yeah. and once I really learned what made me happy I spent some time alone and um, just really learned to love myself it was yeah. so easy to come out because because I loved who I was yeah and so it was I'm not the kind of person that's just like oh well this is who I am take it or leave it but essentially yeah. that's what I was saying it's just yeah. hey this is who I am and I love myself yeah and you don't have to I hope you love me but yeah. you don't have to because I love me yeah and that's all I need there's I've given that speech to a few friends of mine because I learned this in like my mid-20s uh talking to different guys after they were nursing a breakup I was like you need to take like a year off. Mm -hmm. It's like, cause you're never going to be good for someone else until you're good with, for you. Mm -hmm. And one of my friends took that advice, took a year off and now he's married to an amazing woman. Right. Shout out to Kate. Yeah. And Everett knows he's punching up. He's, he's the <laughs> lucky one in that relationship. And I've said that in front of his face and it's, <laughs> it's all good, but. And so your rapid fire questions, I don't quite remember what all you said. But you so said one of them was, uh, yep. did you always know, or was there a moment mm -hmm. that you knew, mm -hmm. uh, Shoot, I can't remember the middle and question. I, I remember uh, the third question what was, was the third question. The third one was, did you, oh, the middle question was, is that why you moved over mm, there yep. to find because of someone? And mm. the third one was, or did you find I th yes? The did listeners, I find someone the over listeners there? Yeah, okay. yelling it's at me right now because <laughs> I'm sure that's not the three questions. No, yeah, I think it was. So, um, did I move over there? Be because so. Yeah, um, I moved over there for a lot of different reasons, and none okay. of them are necessarily um, more prominent than the other. But the three main reasons were that I just wanted to change. I had been yeah. here in Knoxville for four years after having lived other places, yeah. and um, I just was kind of feeling antsy. Um, <laughs> so I wanted to live overseas again. And then the second reason was uh, I had kind of hit a wall with my job at the time, and so I wanted to, a challenge. Yeah. Um, and so the job that I was able to get overseas was a little bit more of a challenge. And um, so I was looking for that. And then also, yeah, I mean, honestly, third was that I knew I wanted to come out. And okay. it was the idea of coming out in the city where people had only ever known me as, you know, Aaron, who's always got a boyfriend, who's always the first one who will, you know, talk about sex or whatever, just straight air I just felt I knew who I was but I felt like if I just suddenly came out everyone would think I was a phony again fear okay. of what other people would think and so I moved across the world and it didn't matter to me that I was moving to the Middle East that was right. a highly Islamic country and you know I didn't fear what they might yeah. think of me or whatever but just I was afraid I was so afraid of the people knowing me not believing me okay or yeah, and, and I don't it's know. It's almost like you, you had a jacket or a cloak on here that everybody, that's how they saw you. Mm -hmm. But going over there, mm -hmm. you could remove that, mm -hmm. and then they would just know you as that person. Right. The real one within. Yeah, it, part of this is going to sound crazy, too, but um, 
I was never, I always knew that I was attracted to women, but I was never very good at being gay or whatever. Like, yeah. uh, I, anytime I was, you know, in my maybe twenties or something, if I was ever in a group of friends and you know, there was a woman who was like openly gay or something like I would try to stand a little bit closer to her. Like, Oh, okay. is she going to find me attractive? Like yeah. I was looking for validation from other <laughs> okay. people to be like, yes, yeah. Aaron, you are oh gay. Like it's That's okay. Amazing. Isn't that crazy? And so, um, I guess going over, I was afraid that here in Knoxville, if I were to look at somebody who knew me my whole life and go, Hey, I'm gay. They'd be like, no, you're not. Let me list off the 20 guys that you've dated oh. in the time I've known you. Yeah. And yet I could go overseas and I could be like, hey, I'm gay. And they would just be like, okay. Cool. Cool. So we how many burpees you. am I having to do right. today? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool. We don't care. Yeah, exactly. What um, What do you want me to squat here? Yeah. And so um, it was what just. What do you want me to squat here? <laughs> That's amazing. Um, so it was just people who didn't. I was, I think I was embarrassed that I had dated m- not embarrassed that I had dated men, but I was embarrassed that I was doing such a radical 180 change right. to yeah, other people. It wasn't a change in my heart because I had always known. But That you weren't coming out as like bi or something like mm-hmm. that. You were completely mm-hmm. shirking off the men. And like just, <laughs> you're gone. You, you all got to go. Yeah, so it was just... It and was I said so shirking. Shirking, it was good. Sorry. It was very validating to just, uh, yeah, be over in a group of wonderful accepting friendly people who didn't know my past and be able to be like, I'm a lesbian and to have not have them be like, are you sure? Cause you seem pretty straight. Yeah. In fact, most of them are like, yeah, we can tell. <laughs> and oh I'm like, God. Oh, Oh, wish somebody had and told wait, me. <laughs> you go, Oh, you need to work on that. You need to not <laughs> say those words. Uh, were there many other gay people within that community? So that's the beautiful thing too, is that, um, I, I was able to meet people just by being a little bit more open. Yeah. Um, who people who maybe wouldn't because because so yeah, uh, native cuttery people. Uh, there's just like different levels of you know Christianity, and there's very conservative Christians, and there's yeah. Um, it's the same with Islam, and so some you know people in who practice Islam are, you know, they're, the women are only going to show their eyes, you know, they're going to be completely covered. They're never going to eat pork and they're never going to, um, drink alcohol and they're never going to get tattoos and, you know, or, um, homosexuality is, is a sin and you're never going to talk about it or anything like that. And then there's people who are more progressive, a little bit more open-minded, you know, and, and, um, where was I going with that? So it's still not something that, is open you know there's certainly no like gay pride parade in doha yeah um but the shocker there's gay people everywhere and yeah. so there are plenty of native cuttery people who are gay lesbian and anything in between um and so yeah i got to meet some of them and, and okay. they're awesome and amazing okay and beautiful some of my best friends now hopefully lifelong friends now we're going to transition back to a question i should have asked earlier because i can't remember if we addressed this on the first one did you have to cover up your tattoos mm. when you were over there? So have to is is not the way it was. Um, Encouraged to? So the way I would describe it okay. is here in Knoxville, Tennessee, if we saw someone from an African tribe walking around in a loincloth, yeah. we, we would cock our heads to the side and be like, that's a little weird. Oh. You I would know, go up his, and be like, hey, man, where are you from? <laughs> yeah, well, you and I would. You know, it's his, it's his or her native dress, and yeah. it's what they're used to, and they don't think it's unusual, but they would probably put on jeans and a T-shirt just to fit in a little bit more. Okay. Same thing there. If I were to walk around in shorts and a tank top, I wouldn't get arrested, but people would just cock their heads to the side and be like, what are you doing? Yeah. You yeah. know, what are you, why, what are you doing? It would be yeah. the same as, you know, walking around in a loincloth here. Okay. And so just to fit in a little bit more, I would wear pants and I would at least wear, um, like a short sleeve shirt, if not a long sleeve shirt. Okay. Yeah. Just, to, and nobody was rude. Nobody was mean. Yeah. Um, in fact, I got a lot of compliments on my tattoos, Nice. but yeah, you would just get people kind of looking at you funny. Like, ah, what are you, what are you doing walking around in right. a tank top? Right. Yeah. Okay. There was a little sidetrack. Okay. So. Lo- yeah, the third question was, did you find, find someone, someone over there or nope? because we already spoiled it at the beginning, <laughs> but just in case you 
happen to get up and go to the bathroom or go get a Coke from the fridge. Right. So, uh, so, no, you did not find someone, but did... I had... I'm, tr- I'm trying to remember. Were mm-hmm. you under, like, a contract where you were, from the onset, you were only going to be there for five months, mm. no matter what? Yeah, good question. No, um, my... It was an open-ended contract that okay. Okay. I could terminate any time and they could terminate any time. So, okay. um, when I went over there, I had planned on staying, like, minimum a year. Yeah. Um... But yeah, I just got got a little homesick, and yeah. um, and I had met someone here before I left. So oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so during that five months, you started a relationship with some. You continued a relationship. Yes, which I, is um, a very very difficult and incredibly beneficial way to start a relationship. Okay, is long distance. I mean, we both say we would never want to do it again. <laughs> but we wouldn't trade like it for that. anything. I, like <laughs> I mean, because yeah, we um, we hadn't dated. We just yeah. had incredibly strong feelings for each other and started our relationship across the world. And so it had to be all through FaceTime and talking and text. And a seven-hour difference meant that when yeah. I was exhausted, she had lots of energy. When I had lots of energy, she was exhausted. It's it's hard, yeah. to, you know. It's hard yeah. to be in sync. Um, and we just had to have a lot of hard conversation when you're when you're right next to someone and they're having a yeah. hard day you can just put your arm around them yeah and you don't have to say anything when someone's having a hard day and you're across the world you have to use your words yeah and sometimes it's really hard to use your but we had to and so yeah. i had to learn how to have those conversations that started out like you know i've had a really rough day today and i want to interact with you right now but i i don't feel like talking can you just talk for a little i'm not mad at you you know yeah. um, but i I don't feel like talking, but I still yeah. want to, you know, it, do you want to just look at each other on FaceTime? And right. sometimes we would or whatever, you know, but. Well, and you're a very forthright and forward person. So I can see you being like, I just, I've been yelling at people all day. <laughs> can I just sit here and listen? Just tell me how your day went. However boring you think it is. Right. Trust me. Yeah. I want to hear it. Or if we, you know, insulted or offended or, you know, said something that didn't sit well with the other person because we only had like one hour a day or so where we kind of were synced up and were able to talk we never really you you don't want to have negative talks during that time you want everything to be sunshine oh how was your day oh it's great oh you know this is great everything's great well everything was not always great right and so you had to force yourself that some of those days you were going to have uncomfortable conversations in that one hour or so that you were able to talk to each other god yeah good lord yeah i can't I can't imagine because that's the problems with like the dating apps and stuff. There's a lot of them where if we connect, I want to say, can we just go get coffee or a beer or something and sit? It's like, because this chit chatty crap (laughs) is driving me nuts. Like, I would rather just sit across from you for an hour and talk than a big shocker. Right. (laughs) Big shocker. Uh, Okay. So then you came back. And it was essentially like you came back and you're in a relationship. Yes, it's been wonderful. Yeah, so we did uh, a lot of the hard work yeah. in those five months when, you know, we were just having to learn to communicate with each other. And, and, yeah, we were both a little bit nervous about, like, okay, we know that we communicate well together. We know we have these strong feelings for each other. How is our day-to-day life going to be? Sorry, he did not smile back at me. Well. That's the dude, that's the dude who plays the fiddle in Market Square, and I was just oh. trying to be polite. <laughs> Gave me a very sorry, sorry, distracted. Okay, so you did a lot of the hard work. Uh, did a lot of the hard work. Yeah, See, laid a lot of listening. groundwork. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah, and so yeah, we were both a little bit nervous of you know, well, how is our day to day life yeah. going to be with each other? And fantastic. I mean, sitting across from, sitting phenomenal. next to one another on the couch using FaceTime. Yeah, like, do we do we actually really like each other? Yeah, it turns out we do. So that's good. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, shoot, I had a question. Now I now <laughs> I went down the rabbit hole with that dude. Uh, <laughs> Okay. Oh, here was my question. So you did come out on Instagram, Instagram Mm -hmm. stories. Mm -hmm. Had you sat down and had that conversation? Like when it comes to your folks. My what? My parents? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, again. What what is your dad's name? Mark. Mark, Much easier to pronounce. Mark and (laughs) Noreen. Exactly. Did you sit them down or were you still over there when you had to tell them? Yeah. So good question. Uh, Mark and Noreen are wonderful people and they... I was so nervous, they couldn't have made it easier. I mean, and so I told them both right before I left. I had actually told my brother um, 
How many siblings a long time do you ago. Have? I have two brothers. Yeah. Okay. And okay. So, um, and so I told my brother a long time ago. He was just like, oh, cool. All right. <laughs> and then <laughs> um, once I met this woman that I'm serious with now, I thought, okay, now it's, it's time to tell the parents because I've found someone that I'm really serious about. And um, let's see, dad and I were having a conversation kind of about something else. And I just, I snuck it in. You and had he, separate conversations. Yeah, with I, don't, I don't even quite remember how. I was so nervous, but yeah. I kind of just snuck it in there. And he just kind of smiled and, and nodded and goes, cool, okay, and just keeps going on about the conversation. <laughs> cool. I had to even go back and be like, wait, do you understand what I just yeah. said? And he was like, oh, well, yeah, and, you know, stopped and gave me a big hug. And I love you. I love you no matter what. And then, by the way, what were we just talking about? Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah, that was wonderful. Yeah. And my mom, same way. Yeah, she just, she just was, okay, great. You happy? Yeah. Good. We love you. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Moving on. Exactly. (laughs) There was one friend of mine that when she finally came out, I'm going to go back to something you said, kind of when she told me this story, it was the first time I'd ever heard of this, which was she had dated the same guy all through high school. I think they started going to college together, maybe even in her freshman year in college, she realized, no, I'm gay. And so she stopped dating him. She had to tell her parents, she was like, they were never into religion before them, but magically they and her sister were religious Mm. and yelled at her and, Mm. you know, to me, all that. And so all that happened. And then she came out at school and she looked around and I'm not going to reveal her name because this is exactly the, the ground you were trying to tread on about the Rosie O'Donnell comment. Let's just use the example. She said, everyone looked like Rosie O'Donnell. That's mm. the way I'm going to put mm-hmm. it. The polite way of putting it. Sure. And she was like, wait, I just lost my family. Mm-hmm. I lost this guy who has been there for me for five years. And this is the choices. I, these are the choices <laughs> I have. She's like, Shh, crap. And like, And all that. But then she found, uh, you got a wasp yeah, that's or something. what I was looking for. Yeah. Right? She, uh, she found her now wife who is a very pretty woman Shout feminine out. lots yeah. of them are pretty yeah, yeah but right. even a little bit more feminine yeah, yeah and my friend uh, my friend is like exactly what you said she's six foot tall mm-hmm. she's a beautiful woman mm-hmm. <laughs> and so she found her now wife and was just like okay good and then her now wife introduced her to all of her friends and she i'm going to quote her Because it's funny, but I have to kind of hold on for a second. Yeah. Like, he just walked up right behind you and was just staring at us. I was like, and the words about to come out of my mouth are not ones I really want to broadcast super loud. She she was, we were working together and she was sitting on my desk talking to me. She came out to me. I was like, I did the exact same. Cool. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Yeah. Like, you're my friend. I don't give a shit. Right. And then she was like, and then she told me the story and she was like, (laughs) And then my wife introduced me to all these other women, and they were all a bunch of hot lesbians. I was just (laughs) like, God, please don't ever say that. And here we are in a corporate environment, (laughs) and that I'm sure. But I just started laughing, and then I told her, I was like, you are lucky I'm not a knuckle-dragging idiot, because you realize what you just said to me. And she was like, I do, I do. Maybe I should have said something different. I was like, you should have. You should have. Well, and... But she, but she, like, now... I'm going to turn it around the positive. She has mended that relationship with her parents oh, and her wonderful. sister. Good. And it's come around to where they're all super close now. Even though I'm not revealing her name. Her and her wife just had twins. Aw, awesome. And they, they've, it's been a, a little bit of a struggle. They had colic, which was a mm. struggle. Because I keep going, when am, I want to come see the twins, man. I want to come <laughs> see the kiddos, man. And she's like, they're really sick. Mm. And maybe I was like, okay, okay. But. I kind of want to see the babies. Yeah. I, I, I'll i chance it. Like, <laughs> Well, yeah. And yeah. I, again, just breaking the stereotypes. I don't necessarily want to say like breaking the stereotypes because it's totally well, cool to, to be. Yeah. yeah. It's totally cool to be a, you know, more masculine presenting yeah. female. Like that's totally cool. Yeah. Um, and, but I guess I was afraid of those stereotypes a bit. And so that, 
and, and some other reasons was why it was so important for me to, once I had come out to my parents, once I had come out to, you know, close friends, um, to come out very, very publicly. And so that's why I did put it on Instagram. It's still on my profile. It's always going to be on my oh, okay. profile. You put um, it down into the... It's in a highlight. Yeah. yeah. You can sit there for half an hour or whatever it is and hear me nervously ramble into the phone um, about my analogy of being a farmer or an architect. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was very important for me to come out in a public way so that... Be, so that other people see it and, yeah. and so that if other women, you know, like me who have my similar background who have always been like, quote, good at being straight, but it just doesn't feel quite right for them. Like it's it's OK. Yeah, it's OK. You can be whoever you want to be. Yeah. You're going to feel so much more free and you can date women and decide that that's not for you. And you can go back to dating men. Yeah. You know, yeah. you can do whatever you want and it's OK. And also uh, I was talking to my girlfriend about this the other day. I realize, and I'm going to say a triggering word here, so buckle up. Oh. I try I to be... Say, just for the listener, we may... Ang- yep, there we go. I, Angle a little bit to where we... barking dog, yeah. Um, I try to be very aware of my privilege. Yeah. And so as a, you know, white, you know, straight-ish presenting, feminine presenting gay woman, I realize that I have some privilege there. And I think... To me, that privilege is I can be a gateway drug for bigots. So, hold, okay. yep, stay with me for a second. Okay. I try to, uh, my job is fairly public as far as, you know, um, being a CrossFit coach yeah. and, you know, yeah. being on social media and whatnot. And I try to be my whole, I feel like my purpose here on life is to be a positive influence to other people and okay. help other people realize their potential and help them be, you know, better athletes and better humans in general. So, um, I'm not without haters, but I think that a lot of people see me as a good, positive person. Okay. Um, and so if they already liked me, so I, I know that there, oh, poor puppy. I know that there's yeah. a lot of people in, who would look up to me and see me as a leader. So it was very important for me to come out publicly because if you already think that I'm a good person, you already see me as a leader, and now I say I'm gay, like, there's no take, takesy-backsies. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, you yeah. You got to be a pretty shitty person to be like, oh, I liked you before, I thought you were a really motivating and wonderful, you know, person before, yeah. and a great leader, but now that you're, you know, yeah, you have a girlfriend, you know, no, who does that? And so, also, I know that as a, a more feminine, you know, presenting white woman, and my girlfriend is beautiful and we're a little bit easier i hate to say this but to stomach i more guess palatable. you know palatable sure yeah. like you know we're a little bit more the stereotype of you know lesbians you see on pornhub or whatever just as far as like we're both i have no idea what that thing is you just told me about, about. Uh. um you know two pretty <laughs> girls together oh god i just remembered my mom listens and so to this. if my you mom are, listens we're gonna to this. oh god we're soldier gonna, on soldier yeah. on <laughs> and if you're okay and it's hard to be okay you know yeah. so if you're okay with us Again, no takesy backsies. Like, if you're okay with us being together, you have to be okay with all LGBT people, I think, in my mind. How can you be okay yeah. with me and my girlfriend and not be okay with someone else just because they don't present as feminine as me or, right. you know, with male gay people or with whatever, any yeah. any sort of, like... So I like to think that we can be... I love to be, you know, public with my girlfriend. I, I love to be public in my story. Yeah. Because if I can help be that gateway drug yeah. to people being okay with LGBTQIA plus PP. There's, there's all sorts of, you if I can be the that, plus at the end. you <laughs> plus, can't do this. <laughs> and you, and you too. Um, if I can be that gateway drug and help people be okay with it, then that's, that's beautiful. That's wonderful. Okay. Uh, it's interesting because I, I'm of the firm belief that if you do not like gay people, you have not met a gay person in your life. Right. Because even like my dad, God love him, he was never anti or whatever. It was just a different era, a different age mm-hmm. where uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. That would be the most why He never th- said anything derogatory. He was never mean about it. And he's the nicest guy in the world. But uh, up until the 60s, it was seen as a mental disorder. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. But he, my sister, one of her best friends was gay, Joe, and he's a big dude. And would you would never have, he did not present exactly to your point, palatable. 
And so one day I was talking to him and he was like, oh, yeah, that's Joe. That's my buddy. Mm-hmm. We, we, we'll split a pizza together. That's mm-hmm. my pizza eating buddy. So it, all it took was one dude to be like, yes. oh, no, this is cool. This is fine. And that is... And you, I'm not saying anyone, you know, has to be out. No, everybody, right. I want everybody to live the life that they're comfortable living. But if you are comfortable being out, I think it is so important to be out and to be pr- like, I finally get it. I didn't yeah. get it when I was closeted. I finally get it because I was given the courage by seeing other people come out and live their lives and be happy and and be accepted and, you know, just yeah. live. And so now I want to be that for other people and I, the okay. more people that see other people living their true lives and being happy just the more other people feel empowered to do the same and it's i think a beautiful ripple effect that i never want to stop okay i also think it's 2018 and it's gotten so much better to where i think a lot of kids now are having a mm-hmm. easier time with it yeah for sure. I mean, that's always how it is. It's just the older generations yeah. have to die out and let the... We get away on a lot of people to die. To the, to right. the negative yeah. way of looking. There's, of course, we're in the South, and up to like five years ago, there was a town here that did not have liquor by the drink. Hmm. And so that town, even though they had two major interstate exits, could not have an Applebee's, a chill, which, hmm. whatever, but it's because they didn't do that. Hmm then the next exit did Mm -hmm. and is now this huge thriving (laughs) city. And so my friend who lives down there, he was like, yeah, we just need some of those old folks to die out (laughs) who have a problem with it, which is funny on its surface. Mm -hmm. And I get it, but it's also in the climate and stuff we're in. There have been times where I have used my size to my advantage and just went over and been like, we're going to stop talking (laughs) because you're, your stupid is showing. <laughs> it's like, you need to stop. Right. You need to stop. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, and a lot of people I just don't even look at, don't even bother with them. I marched in the Pride Parade. Yeah. This last spring. All right. And the funny part is, I think there were, was it like 40, 50, or 60,000 people? Well, however this many. This was the biggest turnout for the Knoxville Pride Parade. But the funniest yeah. was the protesters. I think there were 11 protesters. Yeah. And I walked up because my buddy stood in front of them and flipped them the bird the entire time it was going on kind of blocking them and so i went up and like patted him on the back and looked at them and literally did a (laughs) like that and waved (laughs) my hand i was like i just kept walking i did did i mention this i may have not told you this before so we marched to the end and as we were leaving there were two younger people uh a guy and a gal and they were both married and they had a bullhorn and were yelling. Mm-hmm. But it was such a crappy bullhorn, you couldn't hear what they were saying. That's nice. So, as I was crossing the street, the wife was holding a GoPro because there were three cops standing there talking to the guy. Mm. Just like, not not being harsh with him, just mm-hmm. like, because they were saying some pretty harsh and vile things. Mm-hmm. And they were just talking to him and the wife was holding a GoPro to make sure mm-hmm. whatever... And I passed right by him, and I swear I almost just grabbed, because he was a tiny guy, just grabbed him by the head and planted a big old giant kiss on his face. Turned around to the cops. That's assault, Jody. I know. Turned around to the cops and went, I'll have bail in like five minutes, man. It was totally (laughs) worth it. Did somebody film that? Like, just weaponize largeness and just, well, it was, I don't know. That's just, that's me. I know. But I kind of wish I would (laughs) have. It would have been worth it for the story. I know that's assault, but... You know what? Don't stand and scream at people. Uh, no, that is... A, that's that's assault to me. Right, assaulting as well. I that's agree. A, that's assault I agree. to me. You know, freedom of speech, yada, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. Take take your hate somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, okay. Yeah. So now you're back. Mm-hmm. Oh, did you personally tell anybody else other than your family before you did the Instagram story? Or was, that, or was it almost like, I'm just going to do this because everyone yeah, close to me will see it. let's see. Uh, I told, like, my closest friends. A few people. Yeah, you know, you got to test the water a little bit. Oh, my God. <laughs> Look at you. You got to test the water a little bit. Okay, so now you're back, and you're back to coaching CrossFit somewhere around here. Yeah, so uh-huh. I, I am in a very fortunate state where I didn't absolutely have to dive into a, you know, 
job right away. And so um, I've been able to pick up some part-time work and kind of okay. decide what it is that I, where, okay. the, where the winds are taking me. And do you think you're kind of going to stay on that path of wanting to be the cross, or is there something else that... Probably, yeah. Okay. I mean, I just definitely believe that my life calling is to motivate, inspire, lead, okay. uh, you know, lift other people up. And so that can take various forms, right. but the form that I have been successful in is CrossFit. So, yeah. Okay. How's it feel being back? So I feel like I have gone through uh, like a baptism, honestly. Okay. Like I, f it was especially the first week being back. It was like, okay, this is my hometown. I know how to get around. I recognize everything, but it was like I was seeing it through a different lens. Okay. Um, it just is different. I just, uh, I don't know how else to describe it. The world's is a little bit more beautiful. Um, okay. I, I appreciate, I saw and did amazing things over in Qatar, but I missed, uh, I missed trees. I missed mountains. I missed nature. I missed being able to walk around in shorts and a tank top and fried chicken, I, pork. I missed pork. bacon. Yeah. I oh missed barbecue. God, yeah. Uh, and so while I appreciated the, you know, the amazing things that were over there, I appreciate right. now so much more the things that I okay. had taken for granted here. Um, were you in the scene or community here before you left? No. Or no. So has that been, what's that transition been like? That transition has been amazing as well. Okay. Um, yeah. So some of my closer friends, you know, who I kind of came yeah. out to, um, you know, some of them are gay. And so, you know, we would kind of message about it a little bit. But, yeah, now it's just it's just me. It's out in the open. And so, um, you know, again, I'm no spokesperson, but uh, I have a lot more friends who are openly gay. And, and it's, it's just such a welcoming, inclusive community. Right. Um, you know, we're all people who still have our everyday struggles, but we aren't, at least we're not struggling with who we are anymore. Right. And so, um, so yeah, there's a, there's a closeness and there's an, it's like sharing a secret with someone, okay. you know? Um, and so I do find myself sort of gravitating more toward hanging out with people in the LGBTQ community just because we have that, that shared bond. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a weird thing. Uh, yeah, this climate's not helped, but I buck up a lot against people crapping on people in the South mm -hmm. or throwing a stereotype like, well, everybody in the South is like this. Mm -hmm. They're dumb and they, they hate, you know, black people and they hate gay people. And mm -hmm. it's like, shut up, mm -hmm. just shut up. Like... It's the LGBTQ plus being mm -hmm. is a big community here. Yeah. And I know that because I'm friends with tons of, you know, which. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. so it's funny that you should say that because that's another thing that I realized in living over in the Middle East is that. Whoa. Pigeons. Pigeons again. Um, I realized that. So whenever I was leaving, one of my cuttery female uh, girls at the CrossFit, she said, you're one of my favorite white people that I've ever met. You don't get That's easily amazing. triggered by things. And I was like, yeah. And I was like giving myself, you know, this pat on the back. Like, yeah, I am a woke white person. Like, I don't no. think I don't <laughs> oh think God. that all the Middle oh Eastern God. people are terrorists. Like, I'm a cool white person. Yeah. I'm giving myself all this credit and thinking about how wonderful I am for, you know, not assuming that everyone from the Middle East is a terrorist and stuff and then I stopped and I realized wait like well then why when you do an impression of somebody who you think is stupid do you give them a southern accent oh hell yeah why are you so afraid to go back home to Tennessee and be out because it's because yeah. I didn't even realize that I had this prejudice against my own people. Oh yeah. And so it took me going all the way over to the Middle East and realizing like, oh yeah, no, I'm not prejudiced against you. Like I'm so open minded to then realize like, ah oh, shit, I'm I my whole life I wasn't open minded against my own people. I yeah. I just uh, 
had it in my head that everyone from the South was closed minded and stupid and that could not be further from the truth. Yeah. And I think that's part of my big awakening too and coming back and being able to be here and see the world as so much more beautiful. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well it's interesting. I realized to... my own stupidity. Oh God. <laughs> Come on. Now you just lifted the veil a little bit. You just shirked. I'm gonna use that word away. Shirked yeah. that aside. Well it's like do you remember did you ever go to Happy Holler Palooza? No. It's on yes, the center yes, of Holler Palooza. Yes. So there was one time, this is four or five years ago, I was walking through there with dad and there were lesbian couples walking around holding hands and there was a band on stage that all the dudes were in dresses and I just looked around and I was like, good, we've turned a corner because back in the day, Holler Paloozas or Happy Hollers where people were getting shot, you know, mm. it was a very... I didn't realize that. Oh yeah, it's hmm. a very rough part of town. Okay. And now it's like, oh, cool. Hey. And then, well, you're the very positive person. I'm the slightly negative person. Then I saw Stacy Campfield, and I wanted to go over and punch him. He's the guy who tried to enact bills that you couldn't say gay in school. Oh, jeez. He was state rap. Don't ever look him up. Okay. You don't need that yeah. negativity yeah. in your life. All right, cool. He's an awful, awful, terrible human being. He's also a slumlord. He's not a sponsor of this podcast, so I can <laughs> say whatever. But no, he's a terrible, and he was standing mm. there, and he's always looked smug. I was like, hmm. all right, this over here, this is good. That, dude, you you got to go. <laughs> you got to leave my town, man. I can't have you messing around. But yeah, it's, yeah, this year was the biggest pride parade ever. Mm -hmm. Everyone is, yeah. Like, there's so many more people now that are okay with it. Mm-hmm. As stupid as that sounds. Yeah, but. but I mean, seriously, if anyone has listened this far in the podcast, and it, like it is confusing, and if you have, if you're confused, like message me. Seriously, yeah. I would love to. I was confused. I yeah. still am. Well, not confused about that, but you know, we're all yeah. confused about things in life. But yeah, I mean, it just it is, it is a struggle until you, why yeah. you know whatever make a declaration and realize who you are but i would love to help or yeah you know give advice or just be a listening ear to anyone who's going through that that struggle that crisis that identity questioning i'm debating saying something right now that i'm afraid I don't you're gonna bring up no renee again no i'm gonna say a joke and be like if you're a gay man and you find me attractive please i will take any compliments because <laughs> i can sorely use them from these women, these women on Tinder, like I can so use. There's a friend of mine who, that lives up in Columbus, and he had a thing for me. And he's a very good looking, like svelte, fit dude. Nice. R does a uh, what's it called the uh, the marathons that you go through Warrior Dash? Mm, that mm -hmm. he does those kind of things. Mm -hmm. And there was one day where he got a little bit drunk. He was staying on my friend's couch, and he was like. I'll just be right here if you need me and started patting it. And I think I gave him a hug. I was like, thanks, man. Aww. I needed that. <laughs> it's like, Cause, dude, you're a good looking dude, man. I was like, thank you. I appreciate it so much. <laughs> no, but thank you. Right. <laughs> but thank yeah. you. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's open. Go ahead and hit me up. So give Jody all the compliments and Please. come to me with all your questions. And that is. And struggles. At Aaron.Noreen. Yep. On Instagram. <laughs> Even though I'll give you a shout out at the beginning and I'll probably, if I remember, I'll probably make fun of myself for saying no Renee it's all good <laughs> okay thank you yeah thank you all right we're back we're <laughs> even after we just said thank you we ended up talking off podcast and realized we forgot we didn't forget there this was an just encore something. uh should I start with what yeah I go said? ahead and start okay. your story yeah so growing up playing sports I would always hurl the f word the fa word not the F-U word. I still hurl the F-U word a yeah, lot. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Aaron. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't? <laughs> That's <right>. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, but I would throw out that word and call my friends that. Mm -hmm. And just because it was just what you did. Right. Like, on the weird flip side, never grew up, never said the N-word. Right. But F-A, like a mofo. Mm -hmm. And then I was sitting in college one day and these two guys were sitting on the other side of the classroom and they started hurling that word in a very, the one thing I didn't say was in a very negative way. Mm -hmm. Like F should go to hell, mm -hmm. you know, very, and I just looked at him and I was like, Oh, is that what I sound like? Oh, I'm going to stop doing that. Yeah. I'm done. And yeah. it, it literally took that, that long for me to change who I was. I was never, never had a problem with gay people. 
funny thing, Fulton, we had uh, plenty of gay people. We had, you know, it was, for what it was, it was a, still a diverse school. <laughs> the weird thing in our high school was it was trendy to be a lesbian for a little while. <laughs> like uh, like sure. all, all the cheerleaders decided they were and then decided they weren't and they weren't testing the waters it was cool yeah and i was like um yeah as an adult i'm just like going back on what i said about your brains and all that i was like but some of my one of my best friends was a gay woman it still is a gay woman uh but she knew back then and she came out and all that mm -hmm. and i almost want to ask her is like how did you feel about that Mm -hmm. Seeing all these are like tr these other young women trying to be edgy and cool hmm. and doing that. And they would never do anything more than like kissing while they were drunk at a party. <laughs> You're like, look at that. Isn't that so hot? You know, dumb shit like that. Trying to get boys attention. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Bing. Yeah. yeah. But that's so, okay because they got to kiss girls and girls lips are very soft and very tell kissable. Me about so it. <laughs> yeah. uh, Everybody wins. But yeah, so the verbiage mm -hmm. and then you start talking about transgender people sure so. and so i mean you had s you said that you didn't want to say that story on the podcast maybe because you felt ashamed that you used to use the fa word or just you didn't want to make it seem you know whatever i and try to not make this podcast all about me <laughs> and call, i didn't want to add yeah. one more thing to where it's like oh, i need to stop yeah talking. But anyway and so i mean i just think that it's this constant evolution of learning about other people and yeah. and being okay with if you used to say something that you now realize is offensive like it, it doesn't mean that you are a terrible person or were a terrible person like I was saying um, you know trans people are very much in the news right now and I have friends who are trans but 10 years ago I did not have any friends who were trans I didn't understand it and I didn't know the verbiage and so I remember coming across someone who was trans and then describing that person to another friend and I just didn't know any other way to say except oh it was a tranny and now I'm incredibly like embarrassed but at the time I didn't mean any offense yeah. by it but now I've been corrected and so I don't say that anymore except for yeah. just now but and so I don't say that anymore and so yeah just you know for anyone who's ever used gay in a derogatory term or yeah. you know the FA word or you know been confused about trans people or whatever like it's yeah it is confusing because it's constantly evolving as we all kind of wake up as a culture um, and as people as more people who are live that lifestyle start educating other people like it's not up to I guess it's not on their shoulders necessarily to educate people but it's on yeah. us to listen yeah. and to go oh okay I get it now what I used to say was offensive I'm not going to say that anymore don't feel bad about it don't keep yourself up at night because you said something when you didn't know any better that was offensive yeah just do better next time well and it's a weird thing also when it comes to language and we're also on the flip side because you said the, the term woke earlier <laughs> of this there are some people that i think use that term like woke and they put out there so much into the world of how woke they are mm. exactly analogous to your story mm -hmm. But at the end of it, I was like, you're still a rich white person typing on a $3,000 computer while you sip $40 wine in your $400,000 house. And you're patting yourself on the back for being so, I got somebody on Facebook. I was like, or go out and do something. Yeah, I mean, it's the whole, like, I can't hear what you're saying because your actions speak so loudly, you know? Yes. You just go live your life and that's that's a weird thing i think now is I, i'm a big on trying to which this is funny anybody who listened to this would not believe this but about being more humble hmm. like you should be more humble you should be we talked about this in the yeah, first episode yeah, yeah that you should you know put others thoughts but you should also step back and sometimes realize it's not about you mm -hmm. so bragging about yada 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 Sometimes you got to, no, no, let them, exactly what you're saying about if they have questions or they feel funny, they should reach out to you as mm -hmm. opposed to some white person being like, well, actually, let me tell, let me tell you let me about tell you <laughs> how it is. So, yeah, there, maybe we shouldn't have got back on for me to say that. but I, I don't know. Yeah, I think that that, I just, I think that people sometimes can be 
scared to ask questions or right. scared to speak up because they're afraid of offending or, yeah. you know, people roll their eyes and it's like, oh, you're just being, you know, everything's too politically correct. It's like, just don't have, don't have a fixed mindset, you know, be open to learning and be open to the fact that, yeah, maybe you were mistaken before. I was mistaken before. We all have to learn. Yeah. It's a weird thing also because I listen to so much comedy there's a lot of comedians that it, there's no filter and mm. there's a lot of them that like uh, that are there are gay p- people in that community that say no 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 I don't mind him saying that for a punchline because he's trying to he's getting a like I get what he's doing right I was like because I know he has no hate in his heart like one of the comedians was like I never say anything he's like but I think a lot of people are okay with me and he even had a guy on there that was a gay man and he was like no you have no hate in your heart have you watched Nenet? I haven't yet. Okay. Because I need to get in a, I think I need to get into a mindset to watch that. Yeah, you kind of do. What's uh, Hannah, what's her last Hannah name? Hannah Gadsby. Gadsby. Yeah. Nanette yeah. is the special. I, I've seen it like four times. So she is currently dating Jill Soloway who created Transparent. Okay. I listened to, I've listened to podcasts with Jill Soloway before and never had a problem with her. But she's also keeps kind of morphine, I think is not I don't know if that's a plot. She keeps changing who she is. Evolving. Mm-hmm. I'm going to use the term evolving. Mm-hmm. And I heard her on a podcast recently. And I think for me, a lot of it is... A big thing for me is wealth inequality. And okay. there were a lot of things she was talking about. I'm going to go, I need you to stop talking. Because mm-hmm. there are a lot of people with a lot of hard times. And you're talking about... Well, people got mad at me because I wear a suit. Mm-hmm. And I was like, who gives a shit? Why, maybe, why, maybe that was the biggest problem in her life at no, the time. No, that's what I mean. Yeah. And I finally had to turn the podcast off when you say Hannah Gatsby. And I was just like, I, I wish people like that. It's almost like I don't want somebody who is bigoted to mm. hear her talk. Mm. You know what I mean? Okay. I don't want somebody because I don't want them to be able to point to that saying that's the stereotype. That's why I hate them. Hmm. Does that make sense? It like, does. I mean, yeah. there's just, there's and always. And you can control that. Right. And I know all that. But, yeah. But I, I think it just really kind of struck a chord into me. Well, that's like. Somehow uh, you won't watch Nanette? No, I will watch <laughs> Nanette. I just, I'm. Oh, hell, there are comedy specials from season 40 year comedians that I'm like, this is not funny at all. Like, what the hell? So that does not bother me at all. Because gotcha. I know from the onset, it's not supposed to be funny. I, I, I laughed and there's yeah. lots of if you I've heard there's like two jokes in it from comedians saying those are good jokes right. those are good bits <laughs> like we're gonna go with those were okay yeah it gets a little tense at the end yeah but everybody should watch it yeah yeah you've watched it four times yeah it spoke to me on many levels can I give you a bit of homework and give you, I'll watch it okay can I tell you a special to watch absolutely he's a big dumb animal his name is Burt Crasher he has a new special called Secret Time. Is he the one that did the topless? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like him. Yeah. Had you watched? Have you watched? I have that not special? watched any of his new stuff. Okay. Okay. His last special, The Machine, was really good. But yes, this I've one, seen that one. Yeah. This one, I don't want to ruin it. There's something at the end. Okay. That because you've seen that machine machine special and you know that bit. Yeah. About the Russian mafia, you'll like how his special ends. Okay. But his special is really good. He talks about it's about daughters. Okay. Oh, a big chunk of it's about raising his daughters. His story about the zip line is hilarious. And then his story at the end about Ralph Sampson okay. is amazing. I'll check it out. Nice. Although, just go with it because the first joke's kind of rough. <laughs> he talks about wiping his butt on the sh- bed sheets when he gets out of the shower. Cool. Okay. <laughs> I've had to tell people, I was like, get through the first through 10 that. minutes, get through the first 10 minutes. Cause he goes secret time. Boom. Cause that's the thing on his podcast is he'll say something overshare and be okay. like secret time. Secret time. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I watch your net. You watch secret time. Secret time. Perfect. All right. Thank you again. This time we're really done. Bye.